Am I audible? So let's start the session. So thank you for joining this webinar guys. So I am architect Jamil. So I am a freelancer and a computational designer and a, a parametrical uh, thinker. So I am conducting this free webinar for you people to learn this uh, new software like Rhino, Grasshopper and Lumion. So today is May 9th, 12 p.m. So we, uh, we are on live so we can easily discuss our uh, computational thoughts between us so are you guys uh, can hear me can, you can chat in the chat box so if you can hear me just type yes or no so let me introduce myself i am architect jamil i am a computational designer as well as a freelancer who is doing multiple projects in chennai as well as in bangalore so i am here Today I am presented here to explain my computational thinking process, how I am using Rhino, Grasshopper and Lumion in my uh, uh, projects and uh, doing my best in this computational design. So before this is actually a presentation about the computational design. So before starting this presentation, I just want to ask you some questions mm -hmm. about, about the computation. So, here the it's uh i just uh, move on to the next slide so you, it will be easy for you people so this is the question i just want to ask you begin the workshop so this is actually a workshop so before starting this as an architect are you ready for the future this is the question i just want to ask you people before uh, before starting this workshop if you can type yes if you are ready for the future you can type yes if you are not ready for the future you can type no so it's more like a collaborative session so try to collaborate with me i'm just gonna see the inputs Wait. sorry Just give me one more minute. People, yeah, yes, of course. Okay, yep. So most of them are uh, saying yes to this answer. So because we are here, like a lot of architects are presented here right now, students of architecture as well as uh, uh, architects, like field architects are here. So we are gonna see how the future is gonna be. If you are ready we can proceed with that if you are not if you are not ready we can also gonna see what is the future is coming up right now so before starting this session i just want to ask you some simple questions like like this so if you are an architect and if you are not ready for the future this workshop will bring us a vision to you people just, i just give me one So, yep. So, this is what the workshop is all about. So, I'm just moving to the content state. So, this is the content of the workshop. So, this is the content of the workshop. So, if you people are joining right now, I am architect Jamil and I am a freelancer, I am a computational designer, I am doing this free webinar to, to learn about the future architecture field. So, this is the content is all about, you just see the content. So, yeah. So this is the content is uh, content is all about. We're gonna see the evolution, the tools of architects, advanced parametric design domain in reality, Rhino and Grasshopper workflow, digital fabrication and question and answer. 
this is how the old workshop is gonna be so this is actually a 120 minute workshop this is actually a 120 minute workshop so stay online for throughout the 120 minutes so we will get to see all the three softwares like Rhino Rhino 6 Grasshopper and Lumion we will touch up all the three, three softwares in this webinar let me uh, join everyone in this webinar so everyone will get the chance of the futuristic software so this is the three software we're gonna see today before starting that I just want to explain some brief about why we are using these kind of softwares like Rhino, Grasshopper and Lumion these are some softwares I am using in my day to day life so I am just gonna give you a glimpse about how we can use this software and what is the need of this software in this current scenario so most of them heard about this thing right like uh, we just go to this uh, slide thing I guess someone unmuted it if kindly mute yourself so it will be useful for me so this is actually an evolution before starting anything we just study about the history right it's all about the history so it, this slide is showing some evolution thing so here what I am trying to say here is like this is an a so Thank you, Rohan, for muting yourself. So, yeah, back to the slide. So, here I just want to explain some uh, evolution pattern. So, this is how we started as a old age thing. So, after a further time, it changes, right? We have used some, we have introduced tools for ourselves. Why? Because we started working and we have introduced some tools and we have created our own tools and we have changed everything to minimalistic thing over here. We have introduced computers and in 2021, everything changed into smart. We are using smart watches. It's going to count the steps. We are using smart glasses nowadays and we are using everything is dependent depends of on the futuristic thing so everything is changes everything is updating day to day so this is how the evolution takes place it starts from scratch and th there is a process of evolution so there is a process going on keep on the time changes everything is changing so we just see how things are happening in computation as well as so this is how it started this is how it started so this is how it started and uh, we just see how it's leading so in this slide I just want to explain about the tools how it evolved because we are using tools right now so nowadays all of the people are using tools because we have to do our task right in stone age they have used they have used these kind of tools So they have specified, they have a specific task and they have specified the tools. There is a drastic contrast here, right? There is a stone. These are all made up of stone and these are all made up of metal, right? But in earlier days, they have used these kind of stones to cut a specific skin or something, hard skin or something. This, they have created a short point over here to cut something or to create holes on the land or something like that but mm -hmm. in nowadays we have created metal tools for specific task so this is how it's evolved for specific task we have created specific tools right so this is how it's created so for measuring thing we have introduced scale 
for drilling thing we have used this kind of machine so we are innovating ourselves so we can't measure things using this thing we can't use measure with a spanner right with the cutting player we can't do the measurements so this is how it started so it's keep on evolving it's keep on evolving so in the uh, this is actually a drastic image in the left in the left hand side you are seeing like a, a man chiseling a stone and in the right hand side uh, you are seeing that uh, a, a person who is writing on a pen right sorry people writing on a pen so this is how it's evolved so so first of all we have a concept so first of all we have an idea so we don't know how to convey our idea so they have created uh, these kind of tools to convey their ideas right to convey their ideas because uh, as of now we are architects we will get a concept first of all we will get a concept or we work on a project we will get some sort of ideas and we don't know how to transfer that ideas to the clients or like your colleagues so that we use paper and pen to convey our ideas to colleagues to in the form of drawing but as of now in 2021 century i am conveying my ideas to you people with the vacuum and the tablet pen we are virtually connected right now because we are virtually connected we are all in pandemic right now i hope everyone is safe and doing well so we are virtually connected this is how the ideas is sharing through internet we are in 2021 sorry we are in 2021 so this is how we are digitally connected so i am just conveying my ideas through the online using the latest technologies so this is how we connected right in 2021 so technologies are evolving people are evolving so this is how the evolution is taking place right now so i just want to give a uh, give a small introduction about this so can you see the these two image this is actually a old image it's not this not a old age but it's an old image this is actually a modern image so uh, looking up the image itself you will get to a conclusion right so sorry okay cool so this is how it looks like it's actually a contrast image the first one and the last one you can easily spot some difference in this right you can easily spot some difference so what i'm trying to say here is the functions are same it has four wheel one two Three, four. It has four wheel. This has four wheel, but it has a seaters. This will also have a seaters. But what changes from this to this? Actually, the aesthetical part is changed over a period of time, right? The designing aspect is changed over a period of time. This actually might be in 1900 or something. This actually in 20. 19 concept car a concept car of a bmw so this is how the design evolved from one thing to another thing so people are evolving designs are evolving so we are getting these kind of patterns right these are all like futuristic patterns these are all called futuristic patterns so we don't know how the patterns are created so in this web, uh, workshop we will get to know like how these patterns we can create so this is how it started so we will get to know like each and every depth of how design process is evolving so be stay online throughout this webinar so you will get to know like how the design aspect is changing over a period of time so we have introduced these kind of patterns these patterns are called parametric patterns so i will 
catch that also how to create a parametric pattern these kind of parametric pattern so I'm moving on to the next slide so th this slide actually this is I'm talking about architecture so we are architects and students of architecture are present uh, presented here so I'm talking about the architecture uh, Field. This is how it started. So it's actually basically of uh, columns and roof. So they have created these kind of shelters to hide from the sun. External activities they have created these kind of things. And this is how it's evolved. After over a period of time, we have created our own tools and our own ideology to make the place more pleasant as well as aesthetical there is a drastic change right if you are sitting over here and enjoying some viewpoint it will be different from if you are sitting over here and viewing your uh, uh, this trees or nature out there this is actually a stone age thing and this is actually a modern age thing but the the, the function will be same can you see that this have a column over here and this will have a column over here this will have a roof over here this will have a roof over here what changes is like the material aspect changes all the design aspects changes but the function remains the same this is the main core i just want to explain those things so everything will do the same task but in a different manner and with new innovations so we just try to know what is there in that so this is how it started so here comes tools of architects so this is actually a, a 40 slide presentation so stay online after the presentation you will get to know hands on on Rhino, Grasshopper and Lumion software so stay online and attend this uh, 120 minutes webinar so you will get to know n number of opportunities so this is how the tools of architects behind so we have a fence there are a lot of tools right we have fence we have a steadler we have a white pen over here first of all architects sketch a lot sketch a lot seriously architect has to be sketch a lot if you are going to a client and meeting a client first of all you have to convey our concept with a sketch this is how we have to start so so these are the tools of architects so you have a pen they have a book they have a different kind of rulers they have a lot of sketch pens and this is how it started this is actually a manual thing manual so here we not talk about any computation computation in the sense here we are not using any any type of computers or anything we just using our own hands and gonna draw on a paper or like it can be any medium it can be a board or it can be anything but as of now technology is evolving so we have to start with the concept with the sketches after that we have to convey that into digital thing right digital so for digital thing for creating digital here comes the AutoCAD. This is actually the basic tool which you need to learn before starting the architecture. Before itself, if you are uh, in the first year, if you are in the second year, if you are in the third year, you can start with it. So just type your years in the, in the command box. I will get to know like what sort of uh, people are in there. So just type your uh, grasshopper skills also if you are uh, advanced if you are a beginner if you are intermediate just try to post it on the ca uh, command box so, so i will get to know like what kind of phase i am uh, working with now so this is how it started like digital tools for architects like 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 before autocad this is life after autocad so this is how people are manually drafted it. they so they have some sort of tool to create these kind of drawings right so after some person came and created a computational software like called CAD so they will they get to know what happened there so after CAD came everything 
get easy because if you manually drafted the thing and got error the thing will go to the site and some error will happen in the site and there will be a loss in estimation so there will be a great loss on estimation and there will be a great loss on project so they have created some software like this so it can be manually edited by one person can you see that there are a lot of persons are standing and drafting and drafting but it's all will come into a one system right this is how AutoCAD changed the industry so I'm just talking about why you are talking about AutoCAD in this Rhino and uh, Grasshopper workshop this is all, the, all about Rhino and Grasshopper workshop why you are talking about the AutoCAD because it, it's how uh, the system is evolving so I'm just talking about the evolution of <coughs> architects tools so this is how it evolved so so AutoCAD is mainly for AutoCAD using world, uh, worldwide to make 2D GFCs. GFCs are nothing but good for construction thing. So GFCs, if your people are architects, you people know about uh, GFCs, haven't you? GFCs, good for construction. So those are the drawings we need to submit to the client, to the site. So we will get to get that drawing as a construction element. So after AutoCAD came, we can measure everything, right? We can measure the units, we can measure the distance. It can be anything, any kind of distance. It can be feet, can be inches, or it can be centimeters, whatever it is. So this is how AutoCAD started. So people started moving on AutoCAD and a lot of people get to learn 2D software. This is how it started. So, okay, we can create a uh, visual plans as well as we can create the GFCs, good for construction drawings also. So after that, people started moving on 3Ds. So this is how the 3D start. For that, they have used SketchUp. In AutoCAD itself, there is a 3D tool, but it's not a quite efficient, easy tool to create a 3D. So some people created SketchUp 2020, sorry, not 2020, SketchUp to make 3Ds, 3D drawings, 3D drawings, not 3D models. So this is how it started. So if you want to create some conceptual 3D models, you can stick with SketchUp if you want to uh, create some curvilinear forms you know the sketchup will be a worst case scenario so if you are creating some sort of rectangular thing rectangular basic shapes it will be more easy to create in this sketchup so after sketchup came in the architectural industry most of them are used this most of the architects nowadays using sketchup if you are okay with if you can stick with the box if you want to stick with the box you can go with the sketchup but if you are going out of the box and if you are creating some sort of complex shapes and the sketchup will be not a great efficient tool to create these kind of forms because i am talking about this like we are architects and we are creating some out of the box concept and we may end up lagging that concept into a reality right this is how we start we have an external extraordinary concept and we don't know how to convey that concept into a 3d model right we might have a, a concept about space outer space or like a bridge between two mountains or something like that we will create some sort of extraordinary sketches but we don't know how to convey that sketches into a 3d model but if you are good enough to create some sort of rectangular form and if you want to create that rectangular form into a 3d model this will be a easy tool to create these kind of easy forms so that's why SketchUp created and to create 
easy conceptual models as well as detail model it's not an uh, thing to create like concept complex form so that's how sketchup started can you see here this is directly uh, a drastic image changes here this is how you can detail this much also you can detail this, this much also this is this is how sketchup started so i'm just after some innovations people are try to create a rhino so this is where we are gonna do the things so this is how rhino started so people in abroad as well as in india nowadays india a lot of the people are using rhino 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 is a tool for to create 3d models in all the aspects it can be anything it can be any form you can actually create those forms and it can be manufactured the best part part is it can be manufactured can you see that so how rhino works how so this is how it works so rhino can create some com com complex shapes and edit those edit those shapes easily how efficiently this is actually the easiest way of creating some curvilinear structure like this so this is how it's created this the software we are using to create these kind of curvilinear forms this kind of curvilinear forms will be rhino so this is how rhino started so most of the people are in abroad as well as in india started rhino okay i started rhino so you will get to know first of all you have to know whatever your complex forms can be standard or what and then only you will convince the client it will stand or what so first of all you have to create your concept after that the concept has to be feed has to be feed on a software right on a software it can be do any sort of form for that kind of thing you need to learn rhino so don't uh limited your creativity just go and explore it look like we are going to use rhino 6 we're going to use rhino 7 this is how rhino 7 looks like this is actually the user interface of rhino 7 mm -hmm. i have everyone anyone in this group have installed the rhino 7 just type yes or type no in the chat box so i will get to know what's happening no no yes second year completed in chat okay okay cool so this how it's going rhino so after cam there is a plugin for after that they have you created a plugin called grasshopper so here can you see that this is the grasshopper thing it looks like so this is how grasshopper looks this is the plugin the green color plugin is called grasshopper so after creating rhino they have created grasshopper so basically rhino how rhino works is map full full and full of max mathematics it created using max so that will be a algorithm will be there we will talk about vectors we will talk about the tangent point so we will talk about all the things which we are studied on our basic integra integrated max so this is how it started so we just see how to create some complex form in rhino and grasshopper during this webinar so this webinar is all about create forms and visualize those forms so i I'll, i'll talk about the visualization in the later part so you will get to know like why i am talking about the visualization part 
so after this rhino grasshopper takes place so this is actually the grasshopper interface this is actually one of the grasshopper script which have created to create these forms can you see that this is actually a quite complex form this is actually quite complex form so to create these kind of forms these kind of structures they have created grasshopper so this is how grasshopper looks like so if you are seeing grasshopper for the first time in your lives so this is how the grasshopper will look like so this is how this is uh, this is a component over here this is a component over here this is all these are all called components or elements elements these are all called components and that elements so these are all called wires so what basically grasshopper will do is like we create one component we gonna script something like this we gonna assign points we're gonna assign lines we're gonna assign boxes this is how it starts so i will teach you how the grasshopper workflow will go from scratch so how to install rhino how to install grasshopper how to start with grasshopper what is the need of grasshopper nowadays because uh, in this 2021 century i am frankly speaking there is a lot and lots of need of computational designer computational designer if you are a fifth year person if you are finished your thesis and looking for jobs just try to work on computationals and put on your portfolios so it will be more helpful for you people to get a good company as well as a good placement so there is a lot and lots of chance if you are a computational designer so this is how the grasshopper will look like this is actually a basic very basic introduction about the grasshopper so the components those wires those charts though this is how it looks like it's quite complex while seeing but it's not that complex that much complex while working on it so we're gonna divide that thing and we're gonna see how it's gonna work so the thing which i have shared in the earlier stage which the bmw car it's actually created in a software called rhino and grasshopper the software behind to create these kind of can you see that this is the actual pattern which is created in the software with the the softwares are called rhino can you see in the next window this is actually the grasshopper part grasshopper so what they do is to create this is actually a real car they have created as a real car they created as a real car so this is not actually a visualization it's actually a producted one so this is actually a product product so to create a real scale image it's not only for visualization it's actually gonna build it's actually gonna take place in your hand that's the beauty of rhino and grasshopper this is how it started so they what they do is first of all they create uh concept show here and they used to create three models over here and they will create two scripts grasshopper so the basic ideology of creating these kind of complex forms as well as in a production manner as well as in a product manner as of now i'm just talking about uh, a car a, a cycle or something like that so we just gonna talk about what are the architects are using rhino and grasshopper before that this is archi envision so i just want to explain about archi envision archi envision actually is a one stop solution for advanced architecture tools like rhino and grasshopper so these are the softwares i am using in my 2021 
2021 so to explain my concept so these are all the softwares i these many software i use as i as i say like before i am an architect so i use these kind of software so i use autocad i use sketchup i use rhino i use revit i use adobe illustrator there are lots and lots of software photoshop after effects adobe premiere pro keyshot and lumion <clears throat> so these many software i used to do and obs studio is to for live to create live i am just uh, streaming on the youtube also if you are people are watching in the youtube just uh, subscribe my channel the channel name is like arcane vision the people who are watching in the uh, like uh, google meet also just go and uh, follow my youtube channel so this is what uh, these are the softwares i am using nowadays so i just want to tell you as an architects we need these many software to convey our ideas in 2021 century it's not a problem if you are at a beginner stage it's easy to learn software the only part is like you need to have the force to start the software so we are talked about lot of stuffs right like we just talked about the software we just talked about the architects uh, tools for architects so here a new trend is going right now i guess most of the people are aware of it the new trend is like in the designing field is like parametric design so this is a how the new trend is going right now so if art nova is a movement if a brutalistic is a movement if a minimalistic is a movement Uh, it if it is a moment then parametric design also is a moment is going right now so people get to know this about parametric architecture w why they will stop is like they they don't know about rhino they don't know about grasshopper it might look so complex while looking while scripting at it like if you people uh, go to the youtube and a lot of people will search about parametric architecture grasshopper many of them are just linking those wires and linking those components this is how it looks like so here we just going to see what is parametric architecture first what is parametric design first after that we will go to the in depth study so i don't know about parametric design so i just go went to the google and typed parametric architecture so parametric design so these are all the elements which i have got so can you see that these are all like so complex forms see these are all like aliens forms like fluidic forms right can you see that this is actually one another fluidic form here these are all like so complex forms they have created like this so these are all after searching it i am getting that these are all like parametric designs okay uh, first of all before starting anything i i usually do a net study a case study about a uh, design this is how a design will start right so be, before uh, doing anything i'm just going to the google and just typing parametric design so these are all like some complex shapes and complex forms so we just gonna look up what is parametric design so what is parametric design i don't know so for that i'm just going to give you a small brief about this so parametric design so what parametric design says is we gonna analyze the nature and we gonna bring down the mathematics behind the nature mathematical definitions behind the nature so i guess many of them heard about golden ratio and fibonacci series right can you see that this is actually a shell cut at shell and this is the pattern that is creating inside it so so they have try to connect those points and try to analyze this and they have analyzed the ratio into this so this shape is called golden ratio and the sequence are called fibonacci series so this is how they are cutting down the nature mathematics and use those numbers into the computation so they are just collecting datas 
these are all called data so we we gonna talk about datas datas there are n number of datas are available on the internet the, if you are if you are watching this video right now you are already connected to me using those datas i have shared the link and you people are joined with that so this is how datas work sorry so we gonna analyze the datas we gonna cut down and we just gonna analyze the structure behind it what is the reason of creation of this what is the main source what is what will be the basic function what will be the ratio this is how people are analyzed all those things and they have created some sort of formulas into a series golden ratios and they have named as a golden ratio and they have named this series as a fibonacci series this is how things are started so this is the basic ideology behind the parametric design so before starting it we actually we need lot of datas before starting grasshopper we need or before starting any design like architectural data we need right before starting any design we need architectural data those kind of datas are called site analysis wind movement sun movement circulation axis so this is how the sun path is going right now this is the axis this is the building this is actually a building in trusting building i will just talk about that later so we need lot of datas so i'm just trying to say we need lot of datas to do grasshopper or else like any kind of design that's how it started so i just talk about the workflow of grasshopper computational workflow parametrical workflow both are same computational computational is nothing but we are using computers to create forms right that why that's what it's called computational so this is how the traditional workflow will go we will get a challenge from the client it's example you can create a building or it can be like you can create a skyscraper it, it can be you can create a building facade can be any challenge so what we'll do is we collect a lot of datas what is the site location what is the value of the location what is the sun path what is the wind direction so we just do all the studies all the required studies whether the site will have this or have that after that they we do our architectural mind to process everything so this can be done over here this can be cannot done over here the north has to be in the main light direction those things are all like we use our brain to compute this right after that we will come to a solution whether it can be a maximum of three solutions or four solutions if a group of persons are in the field so there might be 10 solutions there is the maximum solution we get in a traditional workflow but in the parametrical workflow is totally different so we will get the challenge and we will also do the all the studies all the studies like sun study wind study all the studies and all the studies and what we do usually do is we just put all the studies to the computer computation so we use going to use computation computation or nothing but we going to put our all data to the computer to analyze whether it stand or what whether it it's fall or what so we going to simulate our ideas before creating those kind of uh, structures those kind of complex structure complex forms in the end it has to be stand right for that we have to we have to use our computers to create those kind of simulations that's why you are using computation so after that architects finalize and this is actually the best solution in this market so in this thing we after computer works we will get 
minimum of thousand outputs this is how i'm roughly giving these numbers so you will get lot of outputs and we will get to know the output simulation as well as so we gonna give load we gonna give wind direction we gonna give radiations to all the buildings and that that is how it started so this is actually the parametrical workflow this is how it works this is how it works so i just given a brief about how things work so this is actually one of the case study which i have took from big architects the architect name is jack ingles so he is the famous architects in the world right now so he is the top 100 influencing people which is the only one architect in the top 100 influencing people so not only he is an influencer he is also a good architect he used lot of computational in his project if you want to know more about this just go and type big architects in the google you will get all the details about his project so so he have placed this is actually an apartment so he have placed all the windows in this direction so he have put in all the data the site analysis the wind analysis and we just going to see how he end up with this form how he created this kind of form this is actually a basic study of his work so this is how the works is all about so this is his under construction so this is actually a full brief about this project so this is how how he explaining in his vision so they have created they have extruded in z direction and they have what they done is like the basic concept here is like they have a huge road axis over here okay this is the axis so after extruding after extruding his building what is uh, found out is like they lost lot of sunlight sunfall in this building so what they thought is they have imported the sun path sun path to grasshopper and they have manipulated these forms so after importing the sun path the computer computes and given an output like this like these kind of forms so this is how the form is finalized after that they have placed all the windows over here so this is how it ended up it's actually an apartment an apartment with have a uh, peaks and valleys peak these are all valleys these are all peaks so this is how he is uh, explaining about his project after creating this kind of forms what he is saying is like i am getting maximum sunlight sunfall in this road so the building is not blocking the sunfall on the road this is how he is trying to convey his ideas so the the software behind to create this is rhino and grasshopper for the simulations in the basic stage and those are all the advanced thing so they are working on rhino and grasshopper so i'm just uh, giving a brief about rhino and grasshopper this is actually one of an architect from india who is using rhino and grasshopper in his work so this is actually a facade of a building so these facades are all created and designed and ex, uh, implemented in maharashtra so the architect name is sanjay puri architects so if you want to know about his project just go under say his project he is also one of a good um, architect parametric architect who's uh, doing right now so he have created and he have maximally minimized the heat fall on the building the concept behind is like to reduce heat gain heat gain on the building so what he thought is like we can create some sort of different sun shade to create to minimize the sunfall after put all the data sun data in this facade they have ended up using to create these kind of forms these kind of each and every window will have a different form can you see that 
each and every window will have a different profile so what he's saying is like after i uh, putting all this as in computation i am ended up uh, losing 70 to 80 percentage of each game can you imagine that like if you are giving it as a straight window and you need a lot of acs to prevent those heat so he are saying he is saying like this like i have prevented lots of acs i have cut down lots of lots of acs because i am using parametric architecture so i am just focusing on computation so it's it's good if you are focusing on computation and if you are creating your own concepts so is one, this is one of his exploration and this is also one of his exploration this is actually a par par apartment this is actually a friend facade of an apartment in mumbai so this is also designed by sanjay puri so before starting anything we just do all the case studies right i'm just gonna give some brief about all those things so so these are all like one of one people from north also there is one people one person is doing a parametric architecture in the south down india also so the person who are doing it they are using bricks they are using bricks as a parametric unit so this is how it looks like he is also a person who is working on parametric architecture so the software behind is Ryan on Grasshopper. So he have created these kind of walls, right? We have created these kind of walls. Before creating these kind of walls, we have to know like whether it's stand or what, right? So these are all the tools we he need. The architect name is like Vinu Daniel. He is one of the architects from Kerala. He is doing these kind of sustainable brick walls. This can be parametrical architecture, can be sustainable. This is the first thing he made the uh, uh what to say he made a sentence like a sustainable thing can be done using parametric architecture using brick so this is how it started so people are doing parametric architecture people are doing implementing that projects into here it's not only in uh, architecture if you are not an architect if you are a product designer it can be a product so the thing is vast the rhino and grasshopper usage is like maximum we can use it on any sort of thing so it can be a product it can be a earring so this is actually a, a shoe done by adidas i guess adidas so they he, they have used computational wood here they have created these kind of forms to reduce our stress on the food so this is actually the basic concept behind this so i'm just what i'm trying to say here they are they already all in all the fields they are using computation as a design process this is actually a uh, ongoing process right now so i'm just trying to convey it so the in this here is an earring right so these are all forms created using rhino grasshopper so i'm just rush up the thing so in fashion design also they are using computation as a process so they are creating these kind of forms so they are using in the fashion industry they are creating it as a product right so it will have the maximum strength over here this will have a map minimum strength over here for to create this whether it's break or what so they will simulate that in using this kind of softwares so this is in fashion industry so i'm just gonna use what are the some works i have done using rhino and grasshopper in, in my early stage so this is actually a t-shirt t-shirt i have designed using a parametric architecture so this is actually i have sold for kawasaki brand so so this is how it started the parametrical patterns i have created using rhino and grasshopper so this is one of the cube abstract i have created the basic ideology is we we, we have to know our basic concept first of all we need a concept concept is must with concept we can create our own ideas 
so we can implement that into a product so what the basic concept here is like i have made a cube and the cubes are divided into quadrants and the main quadrant is divided into sub quadrants the sub quadrants are divided into in more sub quadrants and i have eliminated some random cubes in it so this is how i end up getting this kind of form so this is how it created so the basic concept behind this kind of forms it's like we have to sketch first and we have to transfer that form into a script after that we can visualize it as a 3d model i guess everybody is with me thanks sunil daniel can you repeat the architect's name please the architect's names are jack ingles and sanjay puri and vinu daniel so yep just few more slides are there uh, i will jump on to the hands on of rhino grasshopper if you are people are still online and uh, if you are installed the rhino 6 the the link which i have shared with you people in the gmail just try to open it so this is one more uh, one more thing i have done using the same script with different materials i just played on materials as an an architect Uh, on that time i used to focused on some gaming aspects i thought of uh, create a game at the, at that time so we just worked on some futuristic forms it can be either functional it can be futuristic it not more like functional it can be futuristic because it's going to be in a virtual world right it's not going to be in the physical world that's why i create created these kind of forms so some the thing is one person is going to climb the building and they going to reach the top so here one player will go like this here one player will go like this these are all like obstacles they will jump from here to here here to here they have to jump like this the whole thing will get pixels that that's how we have create our concept so this is how it started from the basic cube and it's just evolved into a some sort of visual thing like this so this is how it's evolved it's not only in architecture field it can be in any field so after creating that i have just moved on a new plugin called gangaroo pavilion sorry it's a gangaroo plugin somebody is muted there so i have uh, created this kind of structure using physics it's all created using physics so what happened if a load acted in in this direction what happened these are all points or like anchored to the ground these are all called anchor points so i just created using islamic patterns islamic pattern how it can be created and what are the patterns are there so if it is 12 points how the structure will look like if it is 16 points how the structure will look like if it is 4 points how the structure will look like this is how it's evolved so in this thing we have used physics simulations and all those kind of things to create this this form So, if your people are watching it, just go and type RT Envision in Instagram and follow it in, on Instagram. So, I am also in the Instagram. So, this is a, actually a furniture design. It's actually used a Mobius strip as a basic concept. You can see that this is actually the basic concept which I have created using Rhino and Grasshopper. This is actually the basic structure of the chair. It can be. it can be created as a chair like this i have created using the movia strip movia strip concept so it the whole structure is in a single loop it doesn't have any break in between or like it doesn't have any sort of thing like to break down so we can sit over here a person can sit over here and they can visualize it 
and it will have the maximum bending moment and like that i have created it it's actually in a conceptual stage so there is a process of creating a concept into a reality it will be the next process right so these are all the thing which i have created this is also one of a product design which i have used uh, created used right on grasshopper can you see that this is actually the like script which i have done this can be 3d printed that's actually a fabrication thing that i will talk later so these are all the maximum possibilities of creating uh, your product it can be anything so this is a product which i have made this is actually a pen stand you can hold pen also it can hold the phone so if you are watching a video you can watch you can place the phone over here and you can watch it and each and everything it will have old pen it will have hold like 15 pens and it will hold two phones so either this way and this way can be hold so this can be 3d printed so this is actually in a process of production right now so this is this is actually the basic uh, grasshopper script i have made it so i will let you know about this also and this is actually one of the shoe design which i have created and posted on adidas thing so as of now seriously uh, as of now there is a need of a computational designer in adidas field they have just posted like two days or three days before in the instagram so they needed computational designers in adidas so the software behind is rhino and grasshopper is basically the everything is behind is like rhino and grasshopper this is how the wasp this is also one of the exploration using gangaroo and this is also one of the exploration using gangaroo this is actually have created as a connecting bridge so it can connect all the three element so this is actually building one this is actually building two this is actually building three so this is gonna connect three buildings so i am gonna enter in this way also in this way also and this in this way also what they will do is they will, they can climb they will they will have a stairs over here they can access like this if they felt so boring inside the building they can come outside and they can stand over here and watch what's happening in front of this thing and they can stand here and watch what's happening over here these are all the po point of views they can visualize and view so this is how it works right so they can climb from the outside they can sit over there and they can sit over there this is how they can use this can be used as a pavilion also pavilion is nothing but it's a structure that will give a shade and you can sit underneath the people can sit over here the people can sit over here this is how the concept is evolving so what i thought is like first of all we have to give a three connection to the building so this is how it started so first first floor second floor second floor there has to be a connection between three three buildings but it does not look like a bridge it should not look like a bridge it has to be a different one it has to be out of box kind of thing so this actually doesn't look like a bridge right so this is actually a structure that that has to be focused and that has to be created using computational using physics this is how it's created so the basic thing which here is right on grasshopper so these are all mesh they do not fall down from the building it's actually a three story height right they may if they fall from the building they might die so yep and this is the final thing after this thing we just jump on to the presentation part so, uh, sorry uh rhino part rhino and grasshopper part so i will give you a brief about digital fabrication as well as in the end so this is actually a facade the series is start from zero and it will end up here is 100 so this is actually a 11 story building i guess 
टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन अलेवन ट्वेल्व सॉरी इट्स अ ट्वेल्व स्टोरी बिल्डिंग so this is how the pattern is start here which what are all datas i have feeded over here it's sun data and according to the sun it actually extrude over the uh, over a period of time so what it will you do is like in the evening it will have the maximum sunlight in the morning in the afternoon it will reduce the maximum sunlight to this floors so the maximum sunlight will fall on this first floor itself and it will reduce all the irritation on the rest of the floors so that's how it's created the thing which i have created over here is like to reduce the maximum sunfall on the buildings and to reduce the maximum heat gain also so we need the lights but we don't need the heat that's the basic concept we need the natural lighting but we don't need the heat right that's how people need it so this is how it's created so can you see that each and every floors are like aligned in a different way aligned in a alternative way so the sunfall will be less over here here and it will get minimized so these are all the things we going to see if your people are stay online so online you people are ready okay the current viewer is 21 so please so we just jump on to the grasshopper so we just gonna do the hands on on rhino on grasshopper right now if your people are in front of the laptop just go and pick the laptops or if you are watching in the phone it's okay the live session will be on in the youtube also if you have any doubts you can ask then and there it's not an issue this is actually how the rhino will look like before that i just give you the hint this is the mail which i have shared just click this link just go download this first one and click login or create rhino account to download this is how you have to download it create an account using gmail just download it and you will get a 90 days trial for the rhino so this is how it started so so first of all i just explain basic elements of rhino so this is how the interface look like we have uh we'll watch lot of informations before this like we just going to jump into an exercise two days exercise one days exercise okay one day exercise this is how it looks like this is actually the viewport of the rhino it has one two three four viewports are there if you are working on it just take notes also it will be more helpful for you people if you can catch back later So this is how it started. So we we can work on four viewports in simultaneously. So we can work on plan. If you are new to the viewports, it's plan, perspective, and front view and right view. These are all the views. So these are all the views we work on, right? Most of the time, plan, elevation, sections, perspective. These are the views we work on. So this is the basic tool for Rhino. Rhino seven. So this is how it started so don't uh pit in between because it will be a quite interesting session in the end you will get to create an interesting form of the grasshopper so the person who are stay throughout the session i will give this file to you people to work on whatever you can create the grasshopper files or what so you can work on that so before that we just talk about this like there is a point there is a line there is a curve so these are all the tools basic tools in sketchup there will be tools right like that these are all the tools we need to talk about so before that i just give you a basic information about how computational <laughs> works somebody is going to join right now Cool. 
so before starting anything you need to sketch so this is arcane vision free webinar so just go and uh, scan this using your instagram id just open your instagram and scan using this qr code and just connected with me on instagram so we can chat over there so we can transfer our ideas over there so open instagram and make a qr scan to connect with me so if you are watching right now and uh, if you want more about parametric architecture you can connect with me in instagram so it will be easy for us to change our ideas so this is the basic concept before starting it we have to think how computer thinks before it's an easy exercise like we came to know about this all in basic geometry thing itself so everything start with a point right point it doesn't have a dimension dimensionless dimensionless unit it doesn't have any unit it can be a point can be defined as 0 comma 0 comma 0 right this is how it defined so we need only coordinates we doesn't need any values this is actually a diamond less one the second thing you have to know is that is a after creating point i'm going to create two points and going to create one line in between so we have created a line right it has a length that is unit is called length and third is what will come on third so what we'll do is we're gonna create four points and we're gonna create line in between and we're gonna create this as a surface right surface so how surface are created a series of point create a line a series of line created a surface right this is what you people know about early days itself so this is how computer thinks this is how also computer thinks this is this is the basic need which we need to know before starting anything right so what i'm gonna do here is like i'm gonna create a 3d dimensional unit so this is how 3d forms right we need like one two three four five six seven eight points eight points to create a 3d box so this is how it starts with this join this join this join this join this everything if it is joined we end up getting a 3d box right 3d cube this is how things form we need eight points if it is a series of surface it will create a 3d so it has a length breadth into height so these are all basic things so why we are talking about this over here right now so we gonna see how computer thinks so before starting it i just want to explain the brief about what i'm gonna do today so i'm just gonna create curves i'm gonna create forms I'm going to create circles, I'm going to create two circles and I'm going to lock them and I'm going to create a facade of a building. Of a building. So this is what I'm trying to do right now. So how to visualize it as a building? Before that, I just give you the basics about the Rhino. So this is point. Just click this and you can click over here this is how a point can be created so if you are created one point it will be appears in the four points four quadrants so if you are selecting this it will appear in the four quadrants just select the point 0 comma 0 comma 0 you can give the coordinates also so this is how the points are created as of now what i'm going to do is i'm going to work on the perspective thing so what I'm trying to do is I'm just double click on the perspective and I can rotate using the right mouse cursor right button I can rotate the axis 360 degree no it's actually a sphere 
720 degree I can rotate anywhere and I can use it as so how <coughs> Rhino works Rhino works on axis basically just write it down axis it has X Y and Z axis that's how things works so so that's how things work so we need axis if you are going to create some point on air we need axis right so as of now i have created a point on 0 comma 0 comma 0 just try to understand how things are working that's why i've given a basic detail about the formation of the forms right this is how it started so this is how it started also so the point so here a point so after that what will come as a line so this is a line command just try to explore it with yourself so this is a line and just clicking it select one point select another point and just type space you will get a line this is how easy it seems like AutoCAD you can type the command line and it will give a line command just type line and click space L I and E and space you will get the line so you will get a number of line so what you have to do is there is a curve tool over here just click and uh, randomly click it just work on perspective right now so you will get these curves right there is a command called curve also C U R V E curve so you can create a curve using that so it's more like AutoCAD you can type the commands so what you have to do is before starting this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce one command called what just type what I have typed what and clicked space every time what you have to do is type your command and click space that's this how it started so I have created this and click space and then I'm gonna select this and just type space a dialog box is opening over here right a dialog box is opening over here so it says a point and it says the point at 0 comma 0 comma 0 this is at x value this is y value this is z value this is how it started so we have given a point and 0 comma 0 comma 0 this is a basic basic introduction about the rhino there is a lot of things is about the rhino so I, I will let you know people like how to start with rhino rhino so this is how rhino looks like so, okay so and the one more thing if you want to know about this line just select this thing and type what the command name is what so just type command what it says it's a curve every line in a rhino is called a curve okay just uh, imagine that they defined as a curve and it says the starting point and it says the ending point so it's easy to visualize a point visualize a curve it can be any unit as of now we're not talking about the units units are like in the later form i will talk about the units in the later so what the things has to be on here is like you have to before starting anything you have to on these three things so snap smart track gumbel as of now just try to on this gumbel itself only gumbel gumball gumball is a tool is a most important tool while working on rhino just turn on these tools if you are working simultaneously you can work along with me so turn on gumball so yep i'm going to select this i have created a curve right i have created a curve so i, have, I can select this and what i can do is i can re-edit the curve so after selecting this can you people see that wait for it Okay. 
So, yeah. So after selecting this, these are all called control points. Control points. So what it will do is, can you see that these are all like n number of points are created after creating this curve, right? This is actually the starting point of the curve. This is the ending point of the curve. End point, start point, right? Start and end. So this is how it started. So we have one, two three four five six seven and eight points so what are the points are called so those points are called control points so what it will do is it's going to control the curve it's going to use that it's going to control the curve it's going to control the curve so what i can do is i can select this and I can move in whichever axis I want. So this is how you can move it. So this is the use of a gumball. After creating a curve, you can actually move that curve and you can create the change in the curve. So just select this and you can move it everywhere. You can just create it. it. So select this, I can change these two things. Select this, I can move this. This is how things works. So as of now, what I have created is I have created a curve and I can create a 3D cube, right? This is the element it's placed over here is a box. So you can create a box, 3D box. This is how it can be created. A easy 3d box so what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna change the viewports right now this is how you can change the viewports so yep this is how you can change the render port into render if you want to take a quick render it can be done easily so this is how easy you can create forms if you are working just turn on the shaded form it will be easy to work on so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create surfaces so point line curve surfaces how can to create a surface so what i have to do is just select this Control c and Control v to copy it what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna move it actually there is a two curve right i'm gonna move one curve in z direction so this is how i have move one curve can you see that this is how i have moved so what i'm gonna do next is i'm gonna paste one more time and i'm gonna move it in the z direction so why i'm moving it in the z direction because we are gonna design a building form so what i'm to do is like i'm gonna select this and i can move it in this direction i can select this i can change this this direction why i'm changing is like i need a different forms before that i just want to explain this basic thing there is a command called extrude surface extrude curve just use this thing extrude curve select this surface select space and the base form is going to extrude in z direction so i have created a surface right line and you can use the command extrude surface extrude curve you can create it a surface right this is how it can be done so yeah we can create surface easily it can be any sort of form it can be a circle just try to explore your creativity you can extrude in all the directions, right? It can be done in any sort of forms, any sort of angles, any sort of planner. So this is how it's extruded. As of now, I'm going to do some complex forms. What is that is like I'm going to create some sort of different like sort of curves. So for that, I'm going to use loft. 
there is a command called loft loft there is a command called loft it can be it can be it gonna create surface in between surface it's gonna create surface in between so this is actually the first curve second curve third curve it's gonna create surface in between for that we're gonna use loft right elbow ft loft is the first curve it's asked for select curve to loft select curves to loft so we gonna select the curves in order this is the first curve this is the second curve this is the third curve and type space bar so this is how it created a surface right it's how easy to create a surface so in, it's actually a complex surface and a dialog box is open over here loft options it says normal loose tight section cross section there are a lot of options are over there so just click normal and click ok as of now it can be ok right so I have clicked ok it's created a surface so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it into a render mode and just I'm gonna visualize it so this is the form which I have created right this is actually a form which I have created using the loft that is a command called loft which I can create these kind of forms so this is actually called a double curve surface we will talk about this and detail about it in the webinar in the workshop so this is how easy we can create forms so we have created one two three curves and the curves are turned into a form right so yep so you can further edit these forms for that what you need to do is you have to do rebuild command there is a command called rebuild just type on rebuild just click this surface and click spacebar a rebuild surface will appear so it asks for u direction and v direction we are talk about u direction and v direction this is actually an important thing i just want to explain if your surface if there is a surface there will be a u direction there will be a v direction this is these direction are called u and v direction so without u and v we can't create surface okay without u and v we can't create surface for that we need u and v values this is actually we can change the u and v values for that we are using rebuilt surface rebuilt just try to note it down all the commands which I am talking right now. I talked about what, I talked about rebuild, I talked about loft. Just try to note it down so it will be easy. So so that here it mentioned as U5, U8, V8, right? So as of now it shows a V present U and V command. So what we can do is we can change the unit. So I'm changing the unit. So rebuild point 50, 25. Just click preview. It's actually changed into this kind of preview matter. Can you see that? It's actually changed into divided into most of the parts. I'm just I'm clicking OK. So this is how it looks like after turning the U and V. It looks like this. So if you are selecting this and uh, press F10, you will get these kind of control points so much of control points to control the surface can you see that you can move it I'm just selecting some random points and I can move it in different directions right this is how easy you can create elements so yep you can create easily the fluidic forms Render. If I'm clicking render, I can import materials and I can drag and drop to over here. This is how you can create materials. There is a command box over here. Here you can create materials. It can be metal, it can be paint, or anything. Okay. This is how it looks like, right? So as of now, I have given a basic introduction about how to create a surface. So what we have done is we have created the curves and we just lofted it, right? So 
we have divided that surface and multiple parts this is how rhino works so this is actually a basic introduction about the rhino because rhino have a large number of varieties of commands also so there are n number of commands as of now i have my time is limited so i am just giving a basic introduction about how to do a parametric fuzzard okay so for that i am going to jump into grasshopper grasshopper is the basic need which we going to talk today lot of time right grasshopper rhino grasshopper so i am going to jump that grasshopper so that is how it started i guess it's online right now what if you remember so yep this is how rhino works okay then we just talk about grasshopper launch grasshopper this is a plugin which rhino developed for creating interesting forms so before ending uh, this session i have a interesting digital fabrication work which i have done i will share that also so yeah so yep this is how grasshopper will look like so why i'm splitting the screen is like if you are new to grasshopper if you are new to rhino i'm just going to give you a basic introduction about this this is actually windows or uh, rhino this is actually grasshopper this is the thing is called canvas this is how it started so what we have to do is we have to work simultaneously so we need both the software has to be opened on a same window so we work vice versa we create forms over here and we going to import that over here as well as we can create forms over here and we can import that over here it can be vice versa if you are creating some sort of changes over here it will be live update lively update over here this is how grasshopper works it will lively update your thing in your 3d model so what we are going to do is like we going to create one pattern so yeah i will share this file in the end so just stay online and give your gmail ids just drop down your gmail ids uh, in the chat box so it will be easy if you are in the youtube channel you just tap the uh, drop down your uh, gmail id so i will share the required thing with the people so yeah this is how grasshopper works okay so before starting grasshopper i just want to give the basic introduction about this interface this is how it looks like so everything seems like complex right i guess if you are working these are all the plugins which i have installed it doesn't have in your uh, it might not have in your system this is how it looks like this is actually called canvas here only we going to script this things so that one button is adding this wait for him yeah so yeah so yeah so these are all called params params are nothing but parameters so here i will give the basic introduction about all those things so this is also basically like you can double click it and you can type point this is how things works if you want a point that point it will appear as over here can you see that after typing it it's actually in orange color and uh, this is called element i just explain only one element as of now because it's a vast thing so this is called point it's an element 
it's an element in grasshopper okay it's an element in grasshopper so what it has is like it has an input it has an output so we gonna feed one input and we will get an output okay this is how it started so and the main element which see now here is point and there is a dialog box over here i will get to know let you know like what is the dialog box is all about this is actually an in depth study of an element so if you are placing any element it will have an input it will have an output so this is actually the basic element description before starting anything if you don't know about it just place the mouse on it before starting the grasshopper if you want to know about this just place the mouse on it and try to understand this contain a collection of three dimensional points it's, what it says is like it's a point it's going to connect a three dimensional point so what i am going to do is i'm going to create one point as of now i'm going to hide everything for that h i d hide there is a command called hide just hide everything and i'm um, created zero point in rhino zero comma zero comma zero i have created one point so yeah i have created one point and i have typed one point over here what i am going to do is i'm going to set this as a this point what i'm going to do is i'm going to assign this point sorry this point to this point i'm going to assign it from rhino to grasshopper so this is how rhino and grasshopper works we can create forms over here and we can assign it over here we can create forms over here and we can assign it over here so right click set one point set one point this is actually one point i can select this i can hide it so this is how after setting it it actually cha changed into white can you see that the before thing is in orange after changing it it's into white be because it's needed value it will change it into white so this is how it looks like and what i'm going to do is i'm going to add one more line one more point and i'm going to select this control c control v right click set one point i'm going to select this point so this is one point this is one point this is another point so as of now we just created two points i'm going to create one line in between so this is the point this is a command to create a line so it asks for start point it asks for end point what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect this this is the start point this is the end point so i have created a line how quickly i can create a line. this part is it we can change the axis and we can change the units whenever you want it's actually scripted so it will appear over here this is how it easily we are you can script this is actually a small script we can create a big script right now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create one curve and i'm going to copy that curve in in grasshopper multiple times sorry in rhino multiple times so i have created three curves and i have moved in z direction okay and i am going to change this values this this like this what i am going to do is i am going to give these curves over here see are the curves you can import curves right click set one curve and control v v there are three curves i need three values can set one curve i'm going to select this curve and right click set one curve i'm going to select this curve so i'm just hiding everything without the curves i don't need anything without this so i'm just hiding this also there is a command to hide this so as of now i have three curves what i'm going to do is i'm going to loft it there is a command called loft l o f t loft so this is a command to create loft in between so i'm just selecting this and i'm, I'm going to give this as my input while giving this as my input this is actually called wire so it will connect those things so i am just pressing shift so to connect the same input over the output so this is how 
after connecting all those things this is how it looks like i have created loft it's actually in red color right if i am selecting this it will change into green if i am not selecting it it will be in red because if i am selecting this it will get highlighted what the best part is we you can re-edit it actually so yeah this is how you can create it so the best part is you can create looped curves so as of now i'm just creating loop curves moving in three direction you can change can change the units can change the units so yeah right click set one curve this can be one set one curve this can be two set one curve this can be three it shows like red right as of now it shows like red like what what is red means it actually have an error that's what it shows like that so i can introduce one more curve i can introduce one more curve control c control v i can move it in z direction and i can input control c control v set one curve and i can give this as my input so i can give like that and i can change the values also So how quickly and easily I have created some sort of interesting form using this, right? So, so I have created some sort of building form as of now. So, yeah. so I have created this. What the best part is using this small script I have created like these kind of complex forms what the best part is you can bake it right click bake as please okay the thing is it's it will get over here it will come over here as a 3d model the best part is as of now it's in a shadow without baking it it will not create it as a form you have to bake it and you can visualize it using like this so what i'm gonna do here is like i'm gonna introduce uh, some more elements which we need to talk about the parametric fuzzard as of now it's not a parametric fuzzard so i'm gonna introduce some more forms for that what is needed is like these are all the following steps just stay with the steps why i'm doing it like we need to evaluate the surface I'm gonna use one command called evaluate surface. What the input is like it need a surface and it need a point. So the lofted thing I am using panel. These are all like basic commands which we need to follow. Why we are using it? Panel is nothing but if you don't know about the elements, a panel for custom needs and notes text value. This says like it says text value. So I'm just playing this as an output. It says an untrimmed surface. The panel will give you the element which you have created in Rhino. So just click and paste it out. So before getting this, I'm going to use one more command called isotrim. Isotrim. So before all this thing, I just want to explain in in the whiteboard so you will get to know what i am trying to do here so what i am gonna do is like i'm gonna create forms like this i'm gonna create surface like this and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna divide this surface one two one two three four one two three four one two this is how i divide it and i am gonna create line in between this and I'm gonna divide, further divide this, further divide this, further divide this, further divide this, and I'm gonna introduce one pattern. 
I'm going to introduce one pattern. I'm just going to analyze only one surface and I'm going to cut down one surface and I'm going to create one pattern like this. And I'm going to create a pattern like this. I'm going to create one center point and I'm going to move it in one vector and I'm going to create a pattern like this. This is what I'm going to do right now before starting the surface into an isotrain, isosurface, elevated surface, evaluate surface. So these are all the things, basic things I'm going to do right now. So, yep. So, it says it's if it is in yellow color, it needs an input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this as my isotrain surface and it says the domain. So construct domain. So as of now, the domain can be 5.5 to be domain of subset. start and domain end we need a UV domain value construct domain construct domain Divide domain, yes. I forgot the name. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna introduce one command called divide domain square. So what it will do is like it will divide the domain. Domain is nothing but the basic element which we got over here. This is the domain. We're gonna input that over here and we're gonna give u count and we're gonna give p count. So we can give our count as of now i'm gonna give 10 units and 15 units like that so this is how it looks like so so these are all the steps we have to do to create this time so this is the loft and this is the sex segment domain so after creating that i have I'm ended up getting this right can you see that it's actually divided the surface into a number of forms so yeah, we have got some sort of element. Can you see that it's actually divided it? So I'm gonna give as an input. So you, if you want to create numbers, right, you can double click it and you can just type your numbers and click enter. So it will create the numbers. So 15, so I'm just going giving a 15 as V count. Just hiding everything. So as of now we got 
we just divided the surface right yeah we just divided the surface right what i'm going to do is i'm going to evaluate the surface i'm going to create the points and i'm going to move the normals and i'm going to extrude it this is what i'm going to do today and make it as a parametric fuzzer so yeah for that you need to know these are the steps so iso trim are nothing but it's gonna trim the surface and extract single surface and it's gonna analyze the single surface and evaluate surface evaluate surface are nothing but if you are extruded one surface and the one surface will evaluated by this so you need a point like this the input will be the surface here i am using reparameterize reparameterize are nothing but these are all the thumb rules which we need to learn why we are knowing this because we have created a surface after that we just breaking down into an iso trim using iso trim and the domains has to be like that because we can increase the domain and decrease the domain we can change the numbers in vice versa so it's actually changing over here this is how it looks like so everything is connected right so it, this is how it's changed over here so if i'm changing in the rhino it changes the thing and if there is a uv value we need to give a input called mb slider so this is the slider i'm going to give over here so after that i'm just getting all the normal points all the points so before i just script it down and i will teach you like what i have done while using it what i am getting is like point normals u direction v direction and frame these are all the things which i am getting over here so what i am going to do is i am going to move the normals move the normals so this is the point these are all the points which i am going to move so for that i need normals so yeah this is the point which actually moved can you see that the points are moved in some direction it's actually moved in z direction but for me it has to be moved in normal direction so i am going to use vector sorry amplitude 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 are nothing but it's actually a vector thing so it will increase the amount of vector as of now i'm giving some inputs giving some numbers this is the motion can you see that after i am importing it it actually moves inside the surface i'm i need the uh, thing has to be in outside just try to focus on it i will explain in brief after the script is made so this is the surface the point has to be moved outside so we going to create the form okay this is how it's going to be so for that i'm going to use negative command so it will be easy for us so it will come outside right can you see that it's actually coming outside what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a surface with the required surface for that i'm going to use extrude the base which i have need is this is the base which i have need this is the base this is the base and this is the direction sorry actually extruded some other way next the surface and this one extract the curve from it
just give me one minute. We'll just the panel is used to analyze the vector. Geometry and motion, and uh, yep, this is the thing. Your reaction, heat reaction. Stay online. Let me try with uh, this curve. So, yeah. Actually, creating surface, but it's actually creating an outerverse. Mm -hmm. are so much that's why it's going so okay from the point with the geometry with the plane big split can you see that we have created some sort of Interesting form using parametrics. So, yep. Right, I will tell you the basic steps which we have done. So, what I did is let me hide everything so it will be easy for you people to understand things. So, I, I just taken the base. Thing which I have created this is a curve 1 this is curve 2 and this is curve 3 as of now what I have done is I have created three curves okay first of all this is and I have lofted it using loft command I have lofted it and I have created a isotrim command what it will do is it will create the surface into multiple surface so it will gonna trim the surface and it what I'm gonna do it's need a domain so it need a u value and it need a p value so I have, I have used these two values to create it I have used 14 as my u value and 19 as my v value so it changed the number of value over here and what I'm doing here is like I'm gonna evaluate the surface why I'm evaluating is like we need each and every surface where it plays and what is the normal because of that only we can we can give 
are you can create are these so this is what i have created it but it looks like quite different right now so after creating the base extruded base i have created i have just moved in a different direction and i have created the extrude extrude to point sorry extrude to point this is what i have done this is the surface this is the point yeah here all cracks mm -hmm. sorry for my mistake you see that actually it's created like this i thought i made a mistake but it's you can change everything and it will be automatically updated over here the best part is you can bake it right click bake as please okay click okay so yes can you see that complex form can be done within 20 minutes or 30 minutes this is actually a quite simple script so i just give the back the base curve which i have created so what i'm going to assign these as my curve right click set one curve sorry right click set one curve this is the base curve right click set one curve this is the secondary curve and right click set one curve this is the tertiary curve and i'm going to introduce one more curve right click set one curve this is my last curve so this is how the curves work as of now it shows in error so i'm going to disconnect all the disconnect all and i'm going to connect one by one just connect this connect this connect this and connect this everything is same select one curve select one curve mm -hmm. Just clearing every values in it, and I'm gonna reassign it. Something fishy happened while connecting all those things. So you can reassign it, and you can assign it. You can reassign it, and you can assign it. Give me one minute. I messed up. So everything is uh, uh, like cleared here right now. Okay. So what we have to do is, um, yeah. So you have to do one by one. This is the first curve, and this is the first curve. Can you see that the curve? This is actually the first curve. So select this. Somebody want to join, right? So select this. Right click, set one curve, and select this curve. This is actually selected. Select this. Right click, set one curve. This is the second curve. I just want to create and select this. Right click, set one curve. Set one curve. This is the third curve. 
Okay, select the set one curve. It's the fourth curve. So how quickly it's actually created? It's actually created inside the patterns, but it has to be outside. For that, I have to do the negative value. So this is how we can give our elements. So you can increase the direction. It looks so complex. So I just break it down. So you can visualize using custom, custom, custom preview, geometry. So and you can give colors. You will need to add color, color swatch. So this is how the colors can be given. Select this. Right click, bake. Yes, please. Okay, we're gonna bake this object. So this is how I baked it. So this is actually a parametric fuzzard. It can be treated as a parametric fuzzard. What the interesting part is, like you can actually manipulate a lot of outputs. I'm just moving it in different direction and right click bake as please why i'm doing as please is because i'm gonna apply some materials to it so i can change this can you see that it's actually quite complex form so you can drag and drop the material and you can change it into a rendering code and you can analyze like what is the difference like how you can create these kind of forms so this is what i'm trying to explain like it's like somehow i messed up in the between but what i've da done is like i have created curves i have lofted it in direction and i have isotrim it and i have created these sharp edges extruded to a point right this is how it started this is how it started it's it's working on it so it can be a facade of a building or it can be 3d printed the final part is called 3d printed right it's easy to work on grasshopper if you based the knowledge like if you cut down the knowledge i have mostly actually wrongly inserted the element like extrude to point so what it does is like it gonna extrude from a surface to a point that's how it looks like right so yeah just drop down your email uh, or like in my whatsapp so i will share the this file to you people to work on so it will be easy for you to work on or you can visualize it so this is what rhino on grasshopper will look like so can you understand like within an hour we get to hands on rhino and we get to hands on grasshopper it's easy to work on rhino and grasshopper so try to work on rhino and grasshopper so before ending up i just want to give you a basic introduction about fabrication so it will take 10 more minutes to explain that so fabrication after this like what is the fabrication method like you people will get asked me that right we have created that and what will all the sponsors right are at lab and the families and friend and aki envision so this is actually all about aki envision and thanks for watching this so if your people still online and uh, looking this just go and follow us on instagram follow us on youtube as well as aki envision is the basic thing which i am doing right now just go and see it out so for those people uh just give me one minute if your people are watching right now nice presentation nice project thank you thank you so much Peru Vasantha and I I just want to give you about a workshop detail so this is actually the workshop which I am doing right now Archi Envision Parametric Architecture Workshop this is actually Paralab 5.0 so so this is how it looks like so 
it has a five days workshop so i have created a five days workshop just go and see that those things so you will get to know like what is rhino what is gas over the session overview it's actually a six day session online workshop so you will get to know kangaroo weaver bad mesh plus ladybug lunchbox and all those things so you will get to know all these elements and so the event details are given over here so it starts from may 17th and may 21 to may 17 to two, may 21 may 28 is the next exhibition so what is the best part is like you will get to collaborate with the persons in the parallel five and there will be a design competition will be there and the winner will be selected and will be given as a award so you people will not only learn those things and you will get if you are really interested and you will get the knowledge about and you will get to win the design competition so that's how it's went so just go and see this Archean Vision event so there will be a six days workshop in this two hours workshop itself you people get to know like lot of information about Rhino and Grasshopper just go and see this this is the event which we are looking right now May 9th so this is the how you people uh, 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 what is it like attending this workshop so these are all like day wise look up so day one what will be there day two what will be there day three and day four and day five so these are all the session works you will people get to know like you, we will talk about fuzzard treatment we will talk about skyscraper we will talk about radiation analysis we will talk about lumion so these are all the elements which we will talk about in the workshop so these are all like things you people get to know so it's like who should attend this workshop so this can be anyone like a parametric last brand like students and if you want to know more about this it, you can download the brief there will be a brief and there will be a syllabus just go and check it out that also then that will have a brief in detail about it so this is about the mentor this is the architect Muhammad Jamil founder of Aki Vision. so so these are all like previous participant works so this is actually parallel 4.0 design competition winner the Fayaz is the person who won the competition like uh, uh, 10 days before you will be you can win the competition and you can win the cash prize also this is actually the person who won on parallel 3 this is the student works and you can saw the testimonials also these are all the works just go and see it on the website I just copy it and paste it in the google thing so you people can <clears throat> go and see the website this is how it looks like i also paste it on the beautiful so so this is how the testimonials all looks like so i have taken this goes on the go, go and search out that the, the thing is like not only we are students MRC students, architects also attending this workshops. just go and try to what they are saying. So here come the last part. This is the registration charges for the six days workshop. So the basic standard registration is as of now the fee is going on 18,000 rupees but in Archie Invision is the best price in this market like minus 75 percentage offer. So it's going to be like 4,499. So there is a especially offer for, for people who are attending this live. So we are giving a one day offer like there is a thousand rupees off for people who attended the online webinar free, free course and attended like this two hour session, two and a half hour session. There is a concession for you people because you have attended patiently throughout the session. So there will be a there will be an offer so i'm just copying it and pasting it over here so you people will get to know what is the offer is all about so the offer is there will be a hundred percent uh, sorry thousand rupees offer and this early bird registration this is actually early bird registration just go and check it out uh, if you are uh, in the g meet right now just go and check it out this is actually thousand rupees offer right now it's not 4.99 it's there is a 
four four nine nine. There will be a thousand rupees offer. So this link will valid for only twenty four hours. Just go and uh, use the link. Just if you are really interested, just jump on to the RK Envision tribe because there are a lot of architects are uh, creating these kind of forms, these kind of uh, parametric patterns, and they can. Uh, they can uh, implement in their projects also. They can implement in their portfolios. They can implement in their works. So there is a advanced architecture things also here. So just go and check check it out. These are all Instagram works. Just go and follow us on Instagram. So this is all about designing. This is all about architecture. This is all about parametric design. So this is the entity started. Oh, there. So this is our boat as. This is how we started. As of now, there are 500 plus foreign followers are there, and there are 3,000 students are enrolled. This is the founder and the tutor advisor of the RK Envision. Just go and join us tribe. So this is all about today's session. I hope everyone learned so much things in this two and a half hours. webinar thank you for joining this webinar this session is coming to an end so just go and use those link the link will be valid for 24 hours only after that the seats are filling soon so there will be limited seats so try to come forward like the first come first serve surveys are will be there so just use the link and join the meet we will see you on the classes so until then bye guys uh, and before uh, closing up is there any questions or is there any questions you need to ask with me you can ask if you face any if you people on youtube you can ask your questions if you are amazing just ask your questions i am ready to an answer your questions regarding it i'm just will architect jam will be teaching us in this workshop yeah i am going to teach in the workshop i will teach in the workshop he is a person who is for revit so if you have any doubt you can ask i am the one who focusing on computational design and rhino great work thank you what will be the timing the timing will be from 6 to 9 and every details will be there in the website so you can go and check it out it's evening 6 pm to 9 pm rather any doubts regarding the parametric architecture or i will be there for like 5 more minutes you can ask your doubts or else you can wind up this session will you also teach how to make an effective architectural portfolio in a workshop yeah we can work. so i just give you uh, my student work so the impar important part is like we have a group of people so we can share our works in the collaborating collaboration will be there so i will help you there will be a definite or uh, like off session help will be there so you can upload this is actually tutor upload we have a very maintained curriculum so there will be all the students works will be there so you can access those files and you can teach from your seniors i asked a question session started starting kindly give me clarity on that i have asked a question at the session starting okay what is the session starting question sir we can also create parametrics in revit also which is bim but what is the major difference between rhino revit it's a bim soft and i am not aware of it 
you can create uh that's actually a good question you can create uh, uh parametrics in bim but the basic understanding uh, first of all if you want to create a uh, plan you have to know the basic commands in cad right so you can go to revit but it will be like more advanced kind of thing but you the there are uh, more limited elements are there in revit in revit they use dynamo right there are lots of minimal elements are there it's actually in a developing stage so we don't use that much if right now but in for grasshopper there are lots of elements they are created that's why we are using focusing more on rhino and grasshopper so i asked a question in the session starting up is that okay like mohammed abdul rahman we can use both if you are really interested if you want to start with your parametrics you can start with the rhino and grasshopper so will you teach us to take renders on rhino no i just uh, teach lumion for the renderings when do the class starts there was a glitch at my end so the class started at will start at like 17th there will be uh, eight more days are there so next monday the star the class will start so try to use this link as soon as possible there will be limited seats so yeah i will upload this in my youtube so you people can recollect it and you people can enjoy it the, there are a lot of youtube videos but they might not give you the in depth study of the parametrics so when do the class starts will you also got tech thanks for the kind reply thank you so much so i will create an another group in whatsapp yesterday some mess happened with my thing so i don't share the links i will create the thing which the people who have interested i will create my own whatsapp group so we will talk over there yeah uh, thank you sir thank you so much for attending this webinar so yeah is there any other doubts or i can leave now so <clears throat> go on www.arkinvision.com so we will see there just enroll is there any long term classes yeah there will be long term classes but as of now it's not um, oriented but uh, there will be definitely there will be long term classes i am just planning for that the digital fabrication will be a long term class it can be cannot be learned in a few days of 6 days so there will be a <clears throat> long term class will be there so yeah just drop down your emails also i will share the required file so yeah so on um, I guess everyone ask their doubts. Yeah, thank you so much, guys, for attending this webinar. So, I will see you people on the workshop on April something or May something, which is on Monday. So, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining. See you, Tata. Bye.